Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the next vehicle showcase. I was going to showcase aerial vehicles like airplanes, a hot air balloon, and shuttles, but after some newly discovered bugs from the 1.3 update, I'm going to have to push that back just a little bit. Nothing major came up, but I don't like to showcase features that aren't completely functional or have some obvious bugs. But apart from that, I know that this timing isn't the greatest with the ideology update coming out here shortly. So this showcase is actually just for two different mechanics, but because they're both relatively small, I figured that I'd just do them together. So first up, pathing. To better accommodate the wide variety of vehicles out there, I've opted to create a dynamic pathing system with layered regions that are generated for each vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and spawn in both a tank and a car, and we're going to have them path to the same destination and observe which paths they end up taking. As you can see, the tank prefers the path over the sand, while the car prefers the path over the mud. This is because we've added additional path costs for each vehicle, the tank having a higher cost for mud and the car having a higher cost for sand. Now this is just a demo to show that you can customize this for each vehicle. You can also set the path cost as impassable and vehicles will register them as such. This is actually how boats work now as their path costs for every single terrain except water is set to impassable. So theoretically, we could actually create amphibious craft as they would just be vehicles that can path on both water and land. So in total, vehicles are able to have custom path costs for things, terrain, and snow. They also have a rotation cost you can modify which straightens out the vehicle path so they are less likely to create paths with zigzags in them. Vehicles are also restricted on size when pathing such that they will take wide turns around corners and even be disallowed from getting near buildings. This is to prevent them from clipping impassable objects like walls. This change is also reflected in region making which for you non-modders is a quick way to determine if an area is reachable. So vehicles will actually quickly determine whether a path is able to be found or not before actually creating the path. To blow your mind even further, similar modifications have been made on the world map as well, allowing you to specify custom path costs for biomes, hills, and roads. Moving on to turrets, or rather vehicle turrets, I've implemented a way to attach any number of turrets to any points on the vehicle. Now, I'd like to emphasize that vehicle turrets and vanilla rimworld turrets are not the same thing. While they both go pew pew and create future meals, vehicle turrets do not use a verb system and are entirely my own code. This is mostly a note to modders that might think they know what they're getting into if they decide to expand off the existing turret system that I've implemented, so if you're brave enough, good luck. That being said, here are some basic features provided by the framework. As stated earlier, turrets can be attached to any point of the vehicle. Turrets can even be attached to a parent turret where they will rotate along with it. You can assign restricted angles or essentially a sector of fire which will also rotate along with any attached parent turrets. In this example, the mounted machine gun rotates with the main turret of the tank. You can also restrict turrets to a specific angle where they will then become a hard point turret such as a mounted smoke screen system. Turrets are also able to be assigned various fire modes or rates of fire. The player can toggle between these for whichever best applies to the situation. Now, full auto is a valid fire mode, but balance wise it is quite broken so I'm unsure at this time if it will be implemented in the framework. That's not to say that modders won't be able to still add it in their own vehicle mods, but I just want to give a warning as I can see these sorts of things easily breaking balance even with raiders being given access to vehicles. To top off the showcase, let's take a look at the animations for vehicle turrets. A turret is able to apply both a turret recoil and a vehicle recoil value. The turret recoil will push the turret body backward while the vehicle recoil will push the vehicle's body backward. You can use one or the other to best animate the turret, but combining them both for strong firing actions like with the main turret of the tank really gives an extra level of depth in my opinion. Nothing quite beats blowing shit up like being able to see the visual effects of the turret. Sidestepping a little bit, I've also added similar animations to building turrets that will allow you to animate them. Right here we've got the 88mm Flak 36 anti-air defense turret. Yes, you heard me right there will be air defenses. Because you can count on raiders making full use out of every single vehicle you yourself have access to, this means strafing runs, bombing runs, tanks, humvees, etc. are all on the table. Now back on topic, this beautiful turret is actually broken up into multiple layers. The main body of the turret is static while the barrel recoils. This gives a nice animation where it slides back on the rails and slowly resets to its original position. You can count on this level of quality for the rest of the turrets. So that concludes our showcase. I hope you've enjoyed the two very cool mechanics that will really give some flavor to the other vehicle mods while opening up the door of possibilities. Let me know what you all think, and I hope to see you in the next showcase. Thanks, everyone.